Hey everybody, it's Courtney and I am creating my first card using the Simon Says Stamp card kit for September 2018. The kit comes with a container of this mermaid embossing powder by Simon. It comes with two Distress Oxide inks, Tumbled Glass and Tor Stormy Sky, Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing ink, some sequins, a piece of 6x6 six six glittered cardstock, Comes with two envelopes in metallic lavender and metallic white. Of course, the stamp set, this is called Beautiful Mermaids, and it's gorgeous. Perfect for scene building. We have a piece of the Deep Sea Dive Luxury Embossed Paper by Tonic, and a piece of Nina Solar White. So we are starting off with a piece of Nina Solar White. This is five and a half by three and three quarters. And I'm stamping My Little Mermaid here with Simon's Stamp Intense Black Ink because I will be Copic coloring her. Stamped her towards the bottom of the panel and I'm masking her out with Eclipse Masking Paper. I didn't bother to cut the little squiggly lines from her hair. I figured I'll just fix those up later. Next, I will take those two colors of Distress Oxide inks starting off with the Stormy Sky and I'm just putting a light layer down right on the Base of the card and then I will blend that out with the tumbled glass and basically just fading this out to white. These blend really well together. I don't really have to work at it too much. Once I was happy with my coverage here I went ahead and removed my mask and we'll move on to the Copic coloring. For her skin, I'll be using very similar combination to what I normally use, starting off with my lightest color, which is the E50, mapping out my darkest areas, which will be underneath where her hair lies, and off to the right-hand side is where I started my shadows, and then once I got to her tail, I kind of switched it up. Next, I'll go in with my darkest color, which is the E04 just very lightly going over those dark areas, blending that out a little bit with my E11. Then I'll move on to my lightest mid-tone, which is my E01. Then I'll go back in with my lightest color and blend all of that out together. I did take my R20 and just add a little bit of color to her cheeks. Now for her hair, this is tough. I'll be honest, this is, a, this is a tough one to color. I wanted to make her a blonde. So I'm starting with my E50, no, I'm sorry, my E15, and just putting in my darkest areas. Barely touching the paper here, doing various size flicks. I don't really have any kind of plan here as far as where my shadows will be. She's got a lot of hair and some of it is curly on the end. So I'm just kind of picking my darkest areas where one piece of hair is lying underneath another and then trying to concentrate darkest areas being on the little tips of her hair right where they kind of curl under. Now this is more of a brown marker but we will go in with our Y and YR markers to lighten this up to make her more of a blonde. So I'm using my E15 pretty sparingly. Next, I will go in with my YR24, and I'm gonna go right over that E15. So in order to lighten that up, I'm not going to start where my flicks ended. I'm gonna go over the entire thing and extend my flicks a little bit further than they were before. I am leaving a highlight here for my lightest color. I was initially gonna use four colors, but I think I was pretty happy with the coverage that I got with three, so I left out the lightest. Now, if there are areas where you're not sure whether it should be dark or whether it should be light, if it's like behind her, behind her neck or behind her head, nobody's going to notice. Don't stress it. If it's not, if it's lighter than it should be or darker than it should be. 
Next, I will go in with my Y23 and basically cover up the entire area, including the E15 and the YR24, and just lightening up her hair all over the place. Next, I will move on to her tail. Now, I'm switching up the colors here quite a bit. So I'm starting with my G12, and I'm laying out where my darkest areas will be for my greens. I'm also going to be bringing in some BG markers here. So this is gonna be the darkest area for my green markers. Next, I'll go in with my G03 and just go on the left side of her tail. And I'm not extending this very far. I'm just basically drawing some lines here in the larger areas. I will flick it out just a little bit for her fins, I guess. I'm just going on the top part. Then I'll blend that out with that G12 again. Here is where I will be using a little bit of the flicking. Next, I'll move on to my BG11 and extend that G12. I'll go in with my BG13, and this is where I'll put my darkest area for my BG markers, which will be on the right side. Going back in with my BG11 to blend that out. These two can be hard to blend sometimes, so I'm just touching tip to tip here and helping that blend a little bit. And then last, I'll go in with that G12 again and blend in that middle area where the BG touches the, the G markers. Next for her little seashell in her hair and her little seashell bathing suit there, I'm using my RV markers just concentrating my darkest color being on the base of the little shells, then extending that out with my mid-tone and then back to my lightest color. You could get away with two colors here. This is a pretty small area. And next for the little rock that she's sitting on, I'm gonna be using my C markers, my cool gray markers. And I'm starting with my darkest color here because these do blend pretty well. Creating a shadow underneath her she would create a shadow there and where the smaller rocks are kind of laying over that larger rock. Flicking that out just a little bit in some areas, then going with my C3 and extending that out a little bit further. And then I'll go in with my C1 and just add my highlights. Now for that little part of the rock down right below her fin, it was a little bit too light for me. So I did go back with my C3 marker and just add a little bit more later. Here I'm just matching up my Distress Oxides with some of the B markers that I have just to touch up some areas where I may have had a white outline around where my mask was, where it just wasn't masked perfectly. And I'll just touch up that little area for that rock. Next, because the Distress Oxides are opaque, they kind of take away that black line that you have from the stamp image. So I started going over these little twirly pieces of her hair, then realized it stood out too much. So I ended up having to go over the entire image with, this is the EK Success journaling pen. Once I started going over the little squigglies, I kind of committed to having to go, go over the entire thing. Next, I'm taking one of the sentiments from that stamp set, and I'm going to be using the Stormy Sky Distress Ink, and I'll be stamping that in the top part of the card panel. The good thing about Distress Oxides is that you can stamp with them. They give a great impression, so it's a good way to match your background. Next, I'm taking just a strip of this, uh, this embossed paper by Tonic. I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue here, and I have a A2 size top folding note card there. And I'm just adhering that off to the left-hand side. And for my card panel itself, I took a piece of fun foam, and this is the adhesive fun foam here. 
And I use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere the foam itself to my card base just because it gives you a minute or two to kind of move it around if you need to rather than using a double-sided tape once that's down it's down it's not going anywhere last i took a nuvo sparkle pen just to add a little bit of shimmer to her little seashells there as well as her tail i went over her tail twice just to give it a little more shimmer and that is it for card number one using the simon says stamp september 2018 kit Thanks guys for stopping by and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.